There's a long history of people trying to make programming more accessible to a broader collection of people. Block space programming really is sort of one of the efforts that has come out of that and it sort of came in the 90s and one of the things that people observed was that it's very difficult to learn both the conceptual pieces of programming alongside with the syntax of how to make it so that your compiler won't yell at you. Block space programming environments allow people to construct programs by assembling graphical tiles. The graphical tiles usually have different shapes that convey where and how they can be assembled. And the result of that is that it prevents people from making syntax errors. And so students and learners can start with, how do I combine you know, a bunch of simple things to make something more complicated? And once they're comfortable with that, then they can start to transition into languages where they're actually entering it um, you know, with a keyboard and have the potential to make syntax errors. We have evidence that learning to program in a blocks context does keep, give people an advantage when they go to learn how to program in a open-ended textual environment. One of the open questions for the community still is how best to transition people from these blocks-based contexts to uh, professional programming languages. And one of the things that creators of block languages are starting to experiment with is the ability to sort of go back and forth between a text-based version of a program and a blocks-based version of a program. So that's where bidirectional mode switching comes into play. And so what you have there is the ability to take a single program and represent it either as a blocks program and allow people to edit it that way, or as a text program and allow people to edit it that way. And there, then they can go back and forth between editing using blocks and editing using text, and therefore hopefully make a more gradual transition between one context and the other. So in the future, I think we'll still see a lot of blocks being used in educational contexts to sort of help people get started. Um, I think we'll see more and more of blocks being used to allow people to, to experiment with particular domains um, without a strong programming background, or even for programmers um, who aren't familiar with a particular domain to just allow people to try out ideas to learn more about the potential and future of blocks-based programming, please see the June 2017 issue of Communications of the ACM in the review article, Learnable Programming, Blocks and Beyond.